This is interesting stuff. Author and journalist Harry Stein has been a contributing editor to City Journal, a wonderful publication, and uh, written brilliantly, actually, about his journey from left to right. His new book, I think, is essential reading. Here's the title, No Matter What, They'll Call This Book Racist. Mm -hmm. He joins us now from New York. Welcome to you. Pleasure to be here. Now, um, have you been proven right with the title? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you know, you know uh, people hear the title and uh, they just... Uh, actually, on, I, I checked it out on Amazon and I was listed as Harry Stein racist, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, the assumptions are that if you talk about race in an honest way, and particularly from a conservative perspective, that you're a racist. I mean, they assume we're racist to start with. But to try to have the honest conversation that I tried to have in this book is, uh, is really kind of unheard of and frightening to, to people on the left. Yes. I, mean, I, I read the book, and it's, it's a fine piece of work. And if anything, I mean, you're vehemently opposed to racism. You emphasize equality. But you also say that's a starting point for an open discussion. There are some issues here that have to be discussed without fear of, of attack or abuse. Absolutely. Particularly when you're talking about uh, the black inner cities and the, and the persistent problems. Uh, that are that are always ignored. Uh, you really have to begin to talk about culture in a way, actually, that Bill Cosby tried to. But even Cosby, who's probably the most beloved man in America, black or white, got slammed for. Yeah, the, in, a, in this country, we, we have more of a, I think, a, a British system of challenges and accomplishments than an American one. We, we don't have any ghettos as such. We have areas with the majority black population, but there'll be also white people living there too. There are parts of the United States, though, that are completely black, and there's no indication that people will ever escape from these areas of poverty. Right, and, and, and that's certainly the case uh, if, if the problems that have existed for so many years persist, uh, unrecognized, undiscussed, uh, you know, pretend uh, that they simply don't exist. I mean, we talk, for example, about black fatherlessness, uh, Pat Moynihan, in 1965, as a member of the Johnson administration, wrote his famous uh, paper about the extent of black fatherlessness, which at that time was 23 uh, percent, and was absolutely eviscerated and never dared open his mouth about it again. As a result, what, what, what's interesting is um, the whole question of single-parent families was off the table. Uh, it was that discussion was stigmatized, and in fact, the stigma was lift, lifted from uh, single par parent familyhood, and uh, as a result, it spread throughout the culture. It's had a tremendously damaging effect. I mean, when you cannot talk about things which affect the black underclass, inevitably, they spread to the rest of society. Right. Well, let's emphasize that term, black underclass, because the achievements of the civil rights movement, the example of Martin Luther King, the military, which has been essential in all this in terms of equality and understanding. But we're talking about an underclass here, and it's quite a large underclass, and other minority groups are moving up, but this class is staying where it is. Uh, drug use, dependency, uh, and no fathers on the scene. The, the presidency of a, a partly black man has not changed that at all, has it? To the contrary. Uh, you know, of course, there was tremendous hope that uh, Obama's presidency would, would end uh, at least the, the sense of isolation uh, that I think uh, many people felt if they tried to talk about these things. But in fact, it's had exactly the opposite effect. Yeah. Eric Holder, at the very beginning, famously, of, of the uh, Obama administration, said we needed an, an honest conversation about race. He didn't want an honest conversation about race. He wanted essentially an amen chorus uh, which endorsed traditional liberal approaches to, uh, to, to some of these problems, which in fact have, have, have just exacerbated them. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you want to achieve from this book? I mean, it's, it's a fine book, but as with any book, it is only a book. Uh, but we, we need to liberate all sorts of people, black and white, to be able to speak about these issues, if we care at all about people who are suffering, the black underclass. But what do you hope to achieve? Well, it's exactly that, to, to, to launch and, and hopefully contribute to that conversation. You know, I must say, I'm, I'm not a particular optimist in that regard. Yeah. Uh, during the Republican primary campaign, interestingly enough, Newt Gingrich did talk about these things a little bit when he talked about uh, the work ethic in the black community and suggested that uh, black teens might benefit from janitorial jobs, for example, as a starting point to develop a work ethic, which is, of course, sorely lacking in, in some of these communities. And, of course, it was, was beaten up for that comment. But interestingly enough, that's when his campaign briefly took off. A lot of people are hungry for this kind of honesty. Uh, 
it, it'll be interesting to see what happens during the general campaign, because Romney will certainly be attacked, uh, accused of racism, or people in his camp, uh, in his campaign surrounding the campaign will be, because that that's a reflex on, on the part of Democrats and liberals and, and the Obamas in particular, the Obama Obama people in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, how he will respond uh, is open to question. I fear that he will take the, the usual kind of, uh, you know, scared approach and, and, and refuse to address it. I, I would love to see him say, listen, uh, if you want to talk about divisiveness, it's, it's these kinds of attack, attacks which are divisive. It's these kinds of attacks which have to stop and we have to be able to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, just very briefly, is, is there anyone on the left, and you know the left, you were part of it at one point, is there anyone there who is saying, you know what, we just have to have this debate now? I don't think in public life, I, I haven't seen that, but what I have seen in response to this book and, and conversations I've had in general is a lot of liberals kind of very quietly under their breath agree with a lot of things in this book. Uh -huh. I mean, they're not blind, deaf, and dumb. They see what's happening in, America, in American cultural life. They're alarmed by some of it. Uh, and, and they realize that, that uh, these are conversations we desperately need to have, but they will never say so outside of a small circle and even then in a whisper. Yeah, that's been my experience too. Wonderful book. Uh, I hope it does incredibly well. It's already doing very well. And, and thank you so very much indeed. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it.